I think it's gonna be really exciting. Bardhold, the King of Hroth, who kind of like a feminist delf. I, I feel like crying. I feel like crying. It hurts so much. <laughs> I don't know, it's just something that I find really enriching and fulfilling. Certain things, it truly got me in the feels. Hey besties, it's Dor, and this week I'm going to be vlogging my experience of A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon, the prequel to The Priory of the Orange Tree. Now, I was a bit unsure about whether or not I was going to do this video for YouTube, but quite a few of you from the previous video were really wanting to see this. So, to add another installment into the series of Reading the Roots of Chaos, I'm going to be delving into A Day of Fallen Night, which I am very, very excited for, because after reading Priory last year and just immensely loving the story and the world, I'm excited to see how the world was 500 years before. I was able to go to the Samantha Shannon event that happened this past week in London and there were these like a day of fallen night cookies which were just so nice and I knew I wanted to save mine for this vlog and so I'm going to be munching on this whilst reading the book. But I hope you're all doing very well and that you're looking after yourselves. If you've yet to grab that drink of water or beverage of your choice, please do so. I was well hydrated and taken care of. And if you've yet to check out my Instagram, nor my Twitter, nor my TikTok, I would highly recommend you go do that as well because I I post some extra bookish content that you're not gonna see here. But yeah, I'm just really excited to be reading this book because from everything that my friends have been saying about this and just the way that they've loved it so much, I'm even more excited to read it. Because do you ever get that feeling where it's like you're already excited for a book, but then some of your friends have read it and like are really hyping about it and now you're like the excitement that you have is just like overflowing. Yeah, that's basically me in this moment in time. But I just can't wait to see what this story is going to deliver. It takes place 500 years before the Prior of the Orange Tree during the Grief of Ages, where essentially the Dread Mount erupts and there there is a lot of things going down. I think this is a period of time where fire magic is more powerful than star magic, which is going to be very interesting to read about. And we have Tanuva Milim, a sister of the Priory, who is basically in this period of time where people are beginning to question whether the Priory should still exist. We have Glorian, daughter of Sabran the Ambitious of the Queendom of Innis, and also the current King of Hroth, and kind of the fact that she belongs to two different places, but can only be queen of one. And we basically have Dumai, who's like a god singer, someone who sings to the gods to try and wake them from their slumber. These three characters will go through the eruption of the Dread Mount and shape the course of the world for centuries to come. This is an even bigger book than Priory, and so I'm really excited to get into it and get into like the story and get into the nitty gritty and the political intrigue and the commentaries that Samantha Shannon makes. And her writing is always so clever and so exact. It just inspires me so much as a writer and makes me really happy as a reader. And so I'm really excited to get to know these characters and get to know their stories and get to know more of the history of the world of the Roots of Chaos. I have bookmarked roughly how long each of like the books are inside uh, A Day of Fuller Night just so that after each book I can come back and discuss my thoughts on them. I think it's gonna be really exciting and I cannot wait to see what this story has to offer. Also, we are going to have a bit of an unboxing in this video, I think, because I think my Broken Binding editions of The Roots of Chaos are going to be coming, as well as my Waterstones edition, which does have like an exclusive short story in the back. I also need to make a cup of tea or coffee, actually, because I'm going to need something really warm. Also, my proof copy is 250 out of 250 of the signed proofs, which I think in and of itself is an achievement because full marks, I got full marks. I just realized they have a contents page, so I didn't actually need to put the bookmarks in. I guess the visual aid does help. I'm very excited. I'm gonna get to reading and I guess I'll see you in a bit besties. The mountains exploded. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's res- oh shit, okay, Glorian.
Hey besties, so we finished book one of A Day of Fallen Night and I appropriately changed a little bit to more accurately represent the situation that we're now in. It's a lot of fire, a lot of brimstone. Yeah, um, <laughs> Basically, this very first book really gave us a setup into the themes that are going to be explored, the characters that are going to be explored, and a lot of the fates of characters that are going to be explored in this book. And I think there's something about it that Samantha Shannon does really well, like we saw it in The Prior of the Orange Tree and we're seeing it now in A Day of Fallen Night, but there's just something about the way that Samantha Shannon crafts her setups. They're just really like riveting. From the prologue, which I think is probably one of the best prologues I have ever read, it kind of reads like a fairy tale in a way where we're basically being introduced to the, our three main characters, but through the perspectives of their own mothers. And it's really interesting to see this unfold. And seeing this then unfold into act one was really astonishing to read. And I am just in love with this book so far. I think it reads even stronger than Priory, which I was like, I don't think there could be anything better. And then this book just hops along and, you know, just steals the show. But before we get into that, I did have some deliveries that came. And so we do have the finished copy of A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon. This is the Waterstones exclusive edition that has been signed. And also there is some bonus material specific to this edition. So I'm really excited to read that after I've read the rest of A Day of Fallen Night. So that's just going to go right next to Priory. We also had another special delivery today and it is from The Broken Binding. I ordered these months ago and I've literally been excited for them to arrive ever since. They really do make sure these books are protected, which I really do like. So we have The Roots of Kale set by The Broken Binding. I know Illumicrate also did a set, but they literally sold out right away. But I'm just so excited that I managed to snag at least one edition of these. Oh, that's gorgeous. This is the Prior of the Orange Tree. It comes with this gorgeous like sprayed painted edge. End papers are just absolutely gorgeous. But like the PS de resistance for me is the nakedness. This nakedness, honestly, is probably one of my most favorite nakedness that I've ever seen. And even on the spine it says, in darkness we are naked, our truest selves. Night is when fear comes to us at its fullest, when we have no way to fight it. It will do everything it can to seep inside you. Sometimes it may succeed but never think that you are the night. And that's interesting given that this is called A Day of Fallen Night. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And then let's get on to A Day of Fallen Night. Oh, oh damn, that is, that is stunning. And then again, as well with Priory, like, mm, these are gorgeous. And papers as well. And then the nakedness. I think I might like this one a little bit more than Priory's, damn. I'm so, oh, oh, there is a quote as well. My line shall be a lion of queens, my realm a queen dim mighty to behold, for she was my strength, the root of my heart, and her memory will live until the end of time itself. I tell you, our house shall be an endless river, a chain as long as eternity. I definitely want to display these on like the little ladder shelf by here. I don't know how I'm going to do that. I don't know how I want to display it yet, but I definitely want these like on full display. Maybe they could go above my desk when I eventually build it, because I definitely want to put like books that inspire me to continue writing up there. But these are just such gorgeous additions and I can't wait to see how I display them on my shelf. But going into how I feel about A Day of Fallen Night so far, we get four different perspectives in this book. So we get Glorian, who is basically the daughter of Sabrin the Ambitious and Bardhold the King of Hroth, who basically in my opinion, and I wrote this down in my notes, he's basically kind of like a feminist delf. And I love Bardhold with every fiber of my being and I would love to see a like novella or a short story between Sabrin and Bardhold. But Glorian essentially just lives in their shadow and she essentially is 15 at this point and is trying to figure out her way in the world but is now kind of being forced to start assuming her royal role which she doesn't feel like she's ready for. She wants more control over her life but it's hard when you're you know you're a royal and you know the entire kingdom is looking at you for stability and support so Glorian's definitely got a lot on her plate and then we get on to Demai who is a god singer sings to the gods to hopefully um, have them awaken one day and then you know her mother has secrets that basically upend her entire life. And she's basically trying to cope with that the best she can. The relationship between Dumai and Honora is one that I definitely like loved reading about and I will continue to love reading about. I think Dumai as a character is going to grow so much through this book and it's gonna be really exciting to see how throughout the three years that this book takes place in, how she's going to grow. But then we also get onto Tanuva and Espa. And Tanuva and Espa are like some of the, like my favorite characters in this because they're married, they have like an established relationship and just seeing these women 
and kind of do everything that they can to protect their daughter. It's really nice. And I think there are definitely are times where Tanuva and Aspal do have their quarrels, where Tanuva's like more so looking towards like a motherly instinct towards Siu because of her own past. But then we have Aspal who kind of values the Priory more than anything. And so taking it from the perspective of someone who belongs to the Priory and to the mother, it's interesting to see how their different perspectives ultimately have them like reaching towards the same goal. And you know, their love for one another as well means that they'll always like try and support one another. And then we get to Wolf, who basically is just like a soft boy. He's basically the softest boy who doesn't really know much about himself and his own age, but he's strangely attracted to this forest. I have my theories about that. I have some theories about that, which could be interesting to explore if it is what I think it is, particularly because of some things that Wolf has said. I'm just gonna have that stored in the memory bank and in my Notion page for now. But overall, this book so far has just been fantastic. And I'm like, I honestly, I'm only like 180 pages in and there's already so much that I can dissect. Not only Priory, but also A Day of Fall and Night can be books that can be studied like very thoroughly, especially when you relate it to the like fable of George and the Dragon. So I'm gonna go on to reading book two, As the Gods Slept. I think I'm gonna stick with the ARC copy right now though, because it is a floppy paperback. I like paperbacks, but I also like them when they're like this size because it feels, it feels great in my hands. Right. So yeah, I'm gonna get to reading and I'll catch up with you in a little bit. I'm so- What is this man doing? What is this man doing? <laughs> the audacity. Why is he doing that? They were like, let's be careful about this. And suddenly he's like, no. <laughs> what is the emperor doing? She's dead. Anyways. <laughs> Hello besties, it's been not even 10 minutes since I finished book two of A Day of Fallen Night and I am in immense distress. I, I feel like crying. I feel like crying. I knew, I had a feeling this was going to happen, but it's just the way that like it happened. The way that Samantha Shannon made me really happy and then took it all away. <laughs> it's so good, but also it hurts so bad. I think it's very much the way that Samantha Shannon has crafted this realistic world where like tragedy can strike at any given point and it's hard. This second part was also really great. I think throughout the second part, my favorite character was definitely Dumai, and the way that she was able to kind of navigate the courts, navigate her like social standing, navigating kind of this whole new environment for her, but then also trying to like hold her own. And I think we see this through Dumai, Tanuva, and also Glorian, because all three of these women are trying to like, basically trying to like solidify a sort of confidence in their newfound situations. We see Glorian kind of start to like solidify herself as a future ruler of Innis. We see Dumai basically trying to like find herself in this new position and trying to navigate kind of the role that she's been handed. And we see Tanuva not only try and be like a mother and a friend and like a companion, she's trying to navigate her own grief. A grief that she's never really recovered from and we get introduced to some new characters like Kanfe who I, mm, I don't know about her. I'm a bit skeptical of that one. I think Wolf also is kind of a tragic, he, he goes through a lot in this part, Wolf does, and I think he's just like a soft sweet boy who literally wants nothing more than to like just be a loyal person to the people that he loves, but you know, people get in the way, people are like, mm, you shouldn't trust him, mm, he's a bit, mm. you know, people will always have these preconceived 
notions about people and will always try and like discredit someone based off of their upbringing or where they were found as a baby. And it's hard in that way, but I, I think Wolf is gonna pull through. I think Wolf is gonna hold on, hopefully. This second part was very much like setting up for what is now going to be the Age of Fire. As you can see, is basically one half of this entire text. If I was going to be specific, I, it was, it's between a half and a third. Things are going to change a lot for a few of the characters in this because I, there is a little bit of a time jump between the next part as the uh, year before was 510 and now we're going into 511. I think just seeing the way that Samantha Shannon has really crafted the world in this age and really has fleshed out not only the world and its plot, but also kind of like the way certain nations interact with another. We get to see Hroth for the very first time, which I thought was very intriguing. There's the whole notion of dreams again, which I am fairly liking. It's the last time of book two that I literally almost started sobbing at because, and I, and I threw my book. I literally threw my book. It really solidified something, made it finite and definite, and I hated it. But I also loved it because it was beautifully written, but I was also suffering. Now that we're getting into the Age of Fire, it's going to be fairly interesting to see what happens throughout this entire part and see what happens to characters that we love. And yeah, I think after I finish reading this book, I'm going to have a day of self-care. I'm going to get to reading book three of A Day of Fallen Night called Age of Fire, and I'll see you in a bit, besties, to basically detail everything that I've suffered. Good morning, besties. I finished book three of A Day of Fallen Night, and mm -hmm, I have so many thoughts. Like, so much happened within this book, and I know it's like the biggest book of them all, but we really got to see a lot of maturity, a lot of growth, a lot of like tough choices being made, some death. And I don't know, I think this is like probably one of my favorite parts of like the Roots of Chaos world so far, because we really got to see Gloria and Dumai, Wolf, and also Tanuva go through a lot and, and make tough choices that impact the world around them. And it really goes to show like how small things can lead to bigger consequences and some good, some bad. And I just thoroughly enjoyed this part, like seeing the conflict not only build up and the threat loom over the horizon, but also it also it kind of just be like this omnipresent threat that is just there and existing whilst all this political intrigue and plotting and scheming is happening behind the scenes and also in the forefront. I really love the way that Samantha Shannon balances this out. And it's not only just like enchanting the way that Samantha Shannon writes, but just seeing the way that it unfolds is also a lot of fun as well. Going directly into it, we get Glorian at the very beginning of this part kind of reeling and recovering and is then taking the steps in order for her to become Glorian Shieldheart that we know in Prior of the Orange Tree. And it's so interesting to see the growth and the maturity of Glorian from the beginning of book three to the end of book three. Not only does the world around her shape her, but how she begins to shape the world around her as well and how she begins to take active choices in 
kind of defining who she is going to be in this world. And we see a similar experience with Dumai, who is basically caught between two worlds. And as we see at the end of book three, she kind of makes a final choice about things and decides to kind of throw all the chess pieces off the board, if you will. She's also kind of trying to figure out who she is as a person and who she wants to be and who she wants to be remembered as. I think this very thing is a cornerstone of the Roots of Chaos series. Like, how do we want to be remembered? Who remembers us? Who is going to be the one to write history? And it's something that Samantha Shannon touched upon in the event that she did in London about that's what really inspired her to write this series. And as someone who's also writing a novel delving into like history and meaning of history and who gets to write and remember history and people in history, it's intriguing to see the way that someone else takes this on board. We also get to see Tanuva dealing with some hard things in this part, but then also there is like some joyous moments for her near the end, which I found really like fulfilling and reassuring. Like even though like the world is essentially burning, there are still bits where you can find little pockets of joy and I really love that. And then also Wolf having everything with him happening. It's, yeah, it's fairly tough, but we definitely get to see a lot more development of other characters like Kanfei, who I'm in a love-hate relationship with, but I kind of know who, you know, she is as a character and who she will become as a character. Nikea, I mm, love her. I love her. And, and the way that her and Dumai kind of interact throughout this third part was some of my favorite dialogue. I don't know, it's just something that I find really enriching and fulfilling. And I think we also got a hint to like another potential Roots of Chaos novel as one of the characters mentioned an Age of Ice and like storms. And I think that's what happens when Starin, which is like the star magic, is more powerful than Sidon, which is like the fire magic. And so it'd be really intriguing to see how that would play out in a novel and particularly like what would happen to these characters and like how long would it last like what would they need to wait for in order for the scales to balance again overall like I can't really go into much more depth because it gets more spoilery but I'm having just the best time with this book and like I am feeling so many emotions I have like cried more than once it's been a, an amazing journey and I can't believe we're like almost near the end now like we're on like page 695 and this book is 800 and something pages. So I only really have like 150 pages left of this book, which is scary to think about given the fact like I don't know how this is going to end. But I've now also been able to listen to the audiobook on Audible and it's been amazing because there's different voices for the different characters. I don't know, it's just something about that that really got me more immersed into the story, more immersed into the characters and their emotions and their feelings. And also there's a Q&A at the end between Samantha Shannon and Sarah LaRifi. So I think I might give that a listen like after I finish the book. But yeah, I think for now I'm going to get to reading the very last part of A Day of Fallen Night. Yeah, I'm gonna get back to you with all my thoughts and feelings and just tell you everything that I thought about the book. I'll see you in a bit. He didn't. He just... <gasps> no, 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 no. 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 Oh my god. This gives so much explanation for Priory. Ah! Oh my god. The yearning, the yearning. Foreshadowing, foreshadowing, or backshadowing. <sighs> it's done. I finished it. Hello besties, we have finished A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon and as such I've dressed in like a little bit of a Day of Fallen Night inspired outfit. I feel like these balloon sleeves combined by like the silkiness of this shirt really gives like dragon vibes. I finished this last night and I needed the night to consolidate my thoughts about this book because there is so much 
that happened. And honestly, finishing this book, it has solidified the roots of chaos as probably one of my favorite fantasy series of all time. First of all, I really want to discuss the ending of this book because I feel like the build up towards the end of the book and then what eventually happens, I feel like for some readers, they might not like it. And I feel like for other readers, they'll absolutely love it. But for me personally, I absolutely loved it because not only does it prove this was more so a novel about the individual character arcs and more so an internal conflict, whilst there were external conflicts to resolve, I feel like it's it was more so the characters that we needed to pay attention to in this book and their journeys rather than, you know, the big battles and stuff. I feel like that it really came together and knitted together a story that really lays down the foundations for The Prior of the Orange Tree because as we get into the episode, epilogue of this book. If you have read Priory, you really then begin to realize things from this book that really lay down the foundations for what we get in this book and realizing certain things, it truly got me in the feels that bit. So I definitely agree with Samantha Shannon where it's like it doesn't really matter which book you read first because you're gonna get a similar story but you're definitely gonna have two separate kinds of reactions. And in the end we got to see Gloria and become Gloria and Shieldheart and really truly step into a row and we see Wolf kind of realizing things about himself and kind of fulfilling his own kind of character journey. And he's definitely a character I would love to read more of and more from, especially more of his like adventures with Threat. I love the two of them. I want I want to see more Wolf and Threat adventures. Tanuva, Tanuva, I absolutely love, especially in the epilogue, especially where Esbar does like the ultimate act of kindness towards Tanuva, which then sets up some stuff for Priory. And I was like, this all began because of love. And I'm just like, that's so fucking cute. But then also the way that Tanuva and Kanthe's last interaction ends, I definitely feel like is a very powerful moment and I absolutely like found it to be such a riveting moment. I think every character in this book is one of my favorite characters but you know yeah we really get to see like a lot of characters mature in this book and come into adulthood especially in their early teens they're forced into these positions that make them to make very adult decisions very quickly and it's something that I relate to quite a lot uh, being like a teen who had to make a lot of adult decisions and seeing their growth it really resonated with me a lot and especially as we get on to like Nikaya and Dumai as those two really went through it in this last part and I, you know, I really feel for both of them and I can't say any more without going into spoilers um but the way the epilogue ends I feel like really served this story well we get to Marion and Honora who I think were really intriguing characters in and of themselves I think mothers in general were really interesting to read about in this book especially as different characters became mothers or were really doing stuff because they were a mother to their child and it's a really big theme not only in this book but also in the prior of the orange tree, but also in a lot of fantasy that I've read. I'm not sure why I have this attachment to motherhood and fantasy, but it's something that like I really adore. It's something that I don't really see discussed often in fantasy spaces. But yeah, overall, A Day of Fallen Night is really able to deliver such an amazing prequel to The Prior of the Orange Tree. And it really makes me excited for the next Roots of Chaos book. And I don't know what it's going to be exactly. I wonder if this is more so going to take place after Priory. I am definitely going to be rating this five stars. But yeah, that's everything from me for now. I hope you enjoyed this reading vlog of the prequel to The Pride of the Orange Tree, A Day of Fallen Night. And thank you so much for joining me today. I do have a little bit of exciting news before we leave today. And that's just basically like, it's very small, but uh, phase three of Fictional Fates is gonna be starting sometime this month. I think I'm timing it to be when I start the cozy fantasy reading vlog that's coming. So I think that's gonna be really, really exciting. I cannot wait for you to see everything. It all looks so beautiful and amazing. It just means it's gonna be like a new intro intro, new like channel star, basically approaching a new phase of content or some video concepts will stay the same. I will be experimenting with new videos and it's going to be fairly interesting. And I'm really excited to kind of approach this because my ADHD brain will then approach this as like, ah, it's a new era. So then I can start like challenging myself. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, be sure to click that subscribe button so that you're notified whenever I upload next. I'll have all my social medias in the description down below for you so you can follow me on every single other platform. I also have like a vlog version of the A Day of Fallen Night on TikTok. If you want to go show that some love, I would highly, highly appreciate it. And yeah, I guess that's everything. And so I guess until the next time, bye besties.